Hey, good morning, fuckers, and welcome to another day at the Daily BM. I am your host, Brad, with my other host of the mostest, Mikey. What's going on, brother? Oh, everything's great. How y'all doing? You sound so that was enough energy for me. Yeah, I was going to say, Jesus Christ, man, what are you like? Hello, my name is Mike. I am a zombie. (laughs) I am not a What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Daily BM. (laughs) We have a very special guest today. Brad's about to introduce her. Am I? I think so. Oh, okay. That was that was in the that was in the show. That was like in the the standard operating procedures of the show. Look, y'all, I'm a nature. I just do it myself. I'm a nature daughter. And I'm a Lakeland native, and I'm super happy to be on the Daily BM today. I'm super excited! Super excited! Super excited! I'm so excited! I don't know why the movie Dodgeball just came to my head again, where that guy is like lifted her. I'm super stoked! I'm super excited! Oh. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, so yep. Anitra, you're back in town after a cross country venture. Tell us yes. why and and how and how long it took. <laughs> Ooh, I don't think the show's long enough for all those questions, <laughs> but I'll try to narrow it down a little bit. So um, I sold everything I owned that came from, you know, I got divorced many years ago. A lot of people mm-hmm. knew that. And um, I don't know. This life had been weird since then, and I just decided I, I was just kind of over, just over life in general, um, mm-hmm. the, the mundaneness, and right. and I sold everything I owned, except my footprint is the back of a 2004 Toyota Tacoma with the topper on it, Cho- even chopped up my queen size eye comfort bed so that fits in the back of my truck, and wow. we, we, we set off because I figured... I had been battling with some depression and uncertainty, and I figured, well, hell, I can be depressed anywhere. I might as well be seeing the world. (laughs) Might as well see the world depressed. I mean, hell. So when you say we, who's we? Me and my dog. Ah, a dog. Me and my dog and my nine. (laughs) (laughs) Who's nine? I don't even know. Who's nine? Does he hang out with FMJ? I'm just curious. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so oh, no, I don't I don't know if I'm awake enough for this level of uh, comedic gold. <laughs> yeah, we're here all day, man. Comedy all day long, all day, oh, every Jesus. day. Um, so you started you actually uh, left from Lakeland, correct? On this trip? Yep. I left from Lakeland well, and I hightailed it. So I'm involved with uh, Stoll, which is short for short takeoff and landing competition and aviation. And okay. I have a stole related business and there was a big event in Wyoming. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to hit the national stole um, circuit, promote my business, mm-hmm. um, be in the environment that I love. And I'm just going to drive everywhere, take my dog with me. So um, I drove to Pinedale, Wyoming, uh, my first trek across. I had to get there pretty quick and uh, it took me two days to get there. But man, it was just awesome. Awesome. And then uh, I, I logged. We left. Uh, Mid July this year, um, I got back in November and we logged about seventeen thousand miles. Me and my dog Draco. That's awesome. I yeah, mean, pretty cool. Mike, Mike had a pl- Mike had a plane once. He he's into aviation. Oh nice. yeah, that's a while ago. Yeah, <laughs> I, I you, you didn't mention my favorite part, the name of your Tacoma. Oh, Terry the Taco. Yeah. T- Wait, what? It's, yeah. Terry the Taco Tacoma. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, well, the, the, so, you know, um, I think the old school, because I've got a Gen 1. It's a Gen 1 Tacoma. And um, those are coveted. You know, there's a cult around Gen 1 Tacomas. And I'm in that cult now. I understand. Um, that <laughs> like that truck, Jeep cult. <laughs> it is. And uh, the truck was my father's. He bought it brand new in 2004. And oh, he wow. passed away 10 years ago. And when he passed away 10 years ago, it only had 64,000 miles on it. So um, it stayed in the family. It went to my brother-in-law, and he just drove it to Mosaic and back. And mm. I bought it two years ago. And uh, I'll drive it anywhere. I want, I want my plan to drive it to from Key West to Alaska in May. That's exciting. So from Key West to Alaska in May. So mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about what you did to prep for this cross country tour. (laughs) Like you mentioned that you cut down your eye comfort mattress to fit in the back of the Tacoma. What other things did you do? Did you have ways to cook? What'd you do for showers, bathrooms? Like walk me through this 17,000 mile trip. (laughs) Well, the first, so fortunately, fortunately for me, I'm very integrated in the stole community. So my first event, well, my, okay. My first night, 
I had to sleep at a truck stop because I couldn't okay. make it to Wyoming in one day. And um, that was interesting, not knowing where you're going to stop. And at the further out west you get, the further the gas stations are. It's not like here. Like you mm. really need to be mindful of where your gas tank's at and where the next gas station is, or you might be stranded in the desert. Wow. And, um, that was something I was not accustomed to. <laughs> so that was kind of <laughs> weird. So I ended up having to got, I got gouged on, get on fuel because you, it's like you're, you're fucked. You're going to get fuel or you're not going anywhere. So right. $5 for, for 81, $5 a gallon for 81. Ooh, grade. That's and, a little pricey. And uh, it was a super sketch truck stop. But um, to back to answer your question, um, I cut down the bed. It was a platform bed. So I cut down the, my platform. So I had under bed storage. So mm -hmm. the stuff that I use regularly, you know, undies and socks at the front, you know, the same three outfits you wear all week in the front <laughs> and then cold weather gear in the back of the, like those flip things. So you open the tail, drop the tailgate, pull my little bin out and there's all my clothes. Mm -hmm. My toiletries hang in the thing. Just, I have them in a cool hanging, um, like a shower bag for yeah. um, shower houses. So campsites have shower houses, mm -hmm. but because of aviation, I would camp out at these small FBOs. So oh, a okay. lot of FBOs have showers. So for, for those non-aviation people, I don't know FBO that. is. <laughs> oh, fuel-based operations. So it's basically the main building at an, usually it's the main hangar or building at an airport where you get fuel. And they yep. usually have amenities inside. Do they, They're actually really nice. The one in Wachula is great. Do they oh, charge uh, you for uh, that? Um, so the, smaller, the smaller airports generally do not. If they do, it's very, very small. But my friends, the Pades, they were just mm -hmm. um, in Vegas. They had to drop. They mm -hmm. had business in Vegas over Super Bowl weekend. Signature at Henderson Airfield, thirty thousand dollars to park for the weekend. You had to pay three thousand dollars just to land. It was Jesus. ridiculous. But you did say the key word, or words, uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, yeah, when that's going still, on. Like, Everything's like people up that live percent. there, and their 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 business is aviation. I'm just conducting business as usual. It right. was ridiculous. You wow, know. that's that's nuts. That was during just during just the Super Bowl, or was that for the week of or uh, thirty thousand for the weekend? For the weekend, oh, okay, during Super Bowl weekend, to park I down guess you the ramp I, there. So I'm just there. curious: do they like ask for your credit card midair, or do they just wait for you to land? No, and when you say, land, okay. they've got ramp agents or you know people that run around out there, and and as soon as you come up, you know it's just you know you go in, you pay, or you got to go. Yeah. yeah, I was just I was like imagining somebody going, okay, uh, here's it's a visa five four three eight, yeah. and then you land. Well, you know? <laughs> the thing is, is that you have to you have to communicate with the tower once you get on the ground, and you have to listen mm -hmm. to ATC because you get in trouble if you don't listen to ATC. Yeah. Right, this is all federal, so you do what they yep. say, and they, yeah. they 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 take you right to your spot. So yep, and then they they come out and they get you. To make a ching, yeah. machine. Yeah. <laughs> ching, ching, ching. You know, we have tap so. to pay. <laughs> Ding. So, but anyway, um, so uh, I campsites, I, I stayed at campsites, I, I, I stayed at truck stops. Um, I had just your standard Coleman um, camping stove okay. that you just go buy at Walmart. And, and I had that and I had a little cooler. And the, the real challenging thing was eating healthy because things were perishable. You know, and I'm just so limited on space because my, my Tacoma is not, does not extend a cab. It's a single cab, bench seat, five speed Tacoma with a 90 pound dog. So I had to get real creative with that. So I, I was eating out a lot, but, you know, lots of avocados. I started experimenting with canned foods. Like, can I stomach eating a can of Hormel chili not cooked just out of convenience of not wanting to bust out the stove and open it up and take out the pots mm -hmm. and pans and clean up it's like screw it corned beef hash out of a can you know not cooked but it's amazing what you can get used to yeah 100 percent. yeah i mean you take away so, your amenities you know what i mean it, it doesn't take long to adapt <laughs> well this is this is one thing anytime i take a hot shower i never take hot water for granted ever i don't take a shower <laughs> for granted but especially a hot shower because there, yeah. i went there's times I went six, seven days without showering, mm. you know, Damn. 
because it was Yeah, cold. I mean, the only person in the vehicle would use your dog. So, I mean, the dog doesn't right. care. Well, I wasn't really doing that, especially on days where I was getting somewhere and it was just in the car. Driving. But yeah. you've got truck stops too. So truck stops are a blessing. I, I used my first truck stop last year and I was like, all the traveling I've done over the years, I'm like, I can't believe I never took advantage of those. You know, there's nothing better than you're on a long road trip and you're kind of starting to get tired. You've been in the car, you know, you kind of feel kind of gross. Nip into mm-hmm. a truck stop. Take a quick shower or freshen you right up. You'll feel so much better about life. You'll get another four or five hours. How much do they charge for the showers at truck stops? Because I've never Dif- done that either. Differs, of course, just like anywhere Differs. else, state okay. to state. I think I pay like around $10, $11. But I mean, that's the $10 and $11 I ever spent. Yeah. Right. You know, and now these truck stops, you've got all these huge truck stops are amazing. So you almost... Mm-hmm. You know, back in the day, you're, they were thought of as being kind of like sketch, but now they're like, I don't know, got uh, what is it, Bucky's, and oh, it's just nuts. Yeah, and you got TNA. I, I think it's oh, what it's TNA called. TNA and like that. flying, flying yep. J, and oh yeah, love. I, I went into a, uh, a no joke, but I went into a TNA uh, over here near um, uh, Tampa, and there's a mm-hmm. big one right off I four. Oh yeah, uh, right it was it was really nice. Yeah, that was nice on that was nice on the inside too. I was like blown away. I walked out there, I was like, wow, this is pretty big, man. You know, in the showers oh, wow. and everything. I was like, wow, it's crazy. But, and I got all the cool like trucker accessories. I always want to buy them all. I don't know why, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> There's one lady that I follow, um, that she did something similar to you. She she gets uh she got in her car and she's basically just living out of her car. And mm-hmm. uh she has a Planet Fitness membership. Mm. Um, and she showers at Planet Fitnesses because they're all they're in all fifty one states or yeah. fifty states and one uh, territory. Yeah. Um, and there, so anywhere anywhere she goes, there's pretty much a Planet Fitness somewhere close. Like she just basically puts that in her route, you know. Yeah, and she showers at Planet Fitnesses, and gets a workout in. Yeah, and it's only so, like twenty bucks a month. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, twenty, yeah. Bucks, 20 bucks a month for the last. Yeah. I just I can't. I mean, it, uh, uh, you know, anybody that works out anywhere, like I do not, I just can't, they got that damn lunk alarm in there and with the barbell, no barbells. I'm like, you know what? I, I went in there hold, one hold time. On. <laughs> I can't do it. Hold on. I have a fitness membership there. I'm just telling you, they got rid of the lunk alarm. It's no longer there. Really? Good. It, yeah. That's it says bullshit. it on the wall, but nobody hits a freaking button. I've never uh, heard see, it. I the- experienced it one time. The, like the one time I went, I experienced it. It went off and I'm like, you've got to be joking me right now. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. I, I feel like, you know, for now, for me, it's a good fit. Yeah. Um, I just spoke to somebody this morning who works out at Crunch here yeah. locally. Or I mean, not mm-hmm. locally, but somewhere else. And the, he's flying in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was going to meet him for a workout. But it just so happens that he's three hours away. So, you know, it's a six hour yeah. drive for him back and forth. So I mean, it kind of didn't listen, work itself out. I- I'm a I'm an advocate of fitness and working out and I no judgment on the facility for you. That do do you boo. I'm all about yeah. it. I, I yeah. prefer to um I am a huge proponent of supporting local businesses, especially right. in the fitness because the these big uh you know, chain gyms. Conglomerates. Just, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like I like the little I like to support the little guy. Oh <laughs> you know. <laughs> so you know, back to your aviation, you know, you, you're, you said you're a member of Stoll, right? Stoll Nation? Oh, I'm involved in, uh, well, Stoll Nation, um, I have two partners, but that's my, my, my vision, um, okay. Stoll Nation. And so I was involved with Stoll, which is a short takeoff and landing competition. And it's mm-hmm. National Stoll, and it's a circuit, and it travels across, you know, they have events all over the U.S., and I was their operations coordinator for, um, uh, I think, just over three years from their beginning. Right. And, um, and it was so cool and you just travel around and I put together these, these airplane races essentially. And, um, uh, it's amazing community. And then I, they, national stoles, uh, kind of changed, shifted direction. And I had a vision for what I'm doing with Stoll Nation, which I'm a pilot advocate. So I find, um, support for them because, you know, they want Stole to be the next NASCAR, but there's not that much money in it. So these pilots are spending thousands of dollars to go compete in these events. And it's not quite there yet where there's putting out big cash prizes. So they're going on their own dime. Right. And so a lot of them, a lot of the pilots aren't very tech savvy either. So I just kind of help them with their websites. And when I see that, I help them um, 
with social media, you know, give them advice to help grow because they're all trying to grow their presence and to help offset the burden of getting to those events. So um, that's kind of what I do. I'm like kind of, I guess, like a broker to the pilots. So, so when you're when you're saying like they have to fund themselves, are they not like reaching out and trying to get sponsorships from like how NASCAR does with like Tide or whatever these other because they all have like set funds well, yeah. some of these. Uh, Companies. Well, most of those teams have someone who goes out and seeks sponsorships. A lot of these, these aren't right. They're, these aren't team. They don't have big person teams. It's usually, you know, Eddie Sanchez. He's amazing, and he's got this awesome wife named Sherry. And he's actually he he flies a triple seven uh, for his day job uh, for uh, big airline. But um, she's she's his crew chief. You know, right. so these are people that do not necessarily understand the dynamics of seeking out sponsorships. And since I've been involved with all the different, you know, sports I've been in and I understand it better, I do my best to help them as much as I can. Cool. Yeah. So and awesome. I get to be around airplanes all day, like in airports and talk about aviation. It's so cool. Mike, what was the name? What was the model of your plane again? I forgot. Sorry. It was a Cessna 172, 1956. Tricycle gear. Cessna. Yeah. Yep. It was not a straight tail? It was a straight tail. Straight tail? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, straight so. tail. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I was working on my pilot's license. I haven't finished it yet. I'm still a student pilot because uh, I was working on it right as COVID started happening. And okay. then uh, so my instructor stopped uh, teaching for a while. And then I, I ended up, my plane was sitting in the hangar for, you know, it sat in the hangar all of 2020 mm-hmm. and uh, just got tired of paying the hangar rent. So I, was, I sold my plane and haven't gotten back into it yet. But I, pl- I plan to. It's on my list, on my bucket list. Hopefully in the next year. Nice. I'll have an opportunity again. Well, that I've seen a few videos of flying. Yeah, I've seen a few what? videos of Mike flying. He actually he actually did really well, man. I was, I was actually kind of like proud I, of me. I have <laughs> enough hours where I can solo. Um, mm-hmm. But... I still don't, I don't have the confidence yet. Yeah. That takes time. I, I just, I'd like to fly just a little bit, a couple more times. Cause mm-hmm. I, a lot of the days that we flew, they weren't very windy. So mm-hmm. it was pretty easy landing. And I kind of wanted to go up a couple of days where the wind was a little kicking a little bit harder. So I'd have to practice landing in that situation. Cause I know that the first day I go solo, it's going to be like, you know, Crazy. zero, yeah. zero wind. And then all of a sudden it'd be like 40 miles, you know, gusts. gusts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Crosswind. Like, oh, oh shit. 40 mile gusts, crosswind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 40 mile gusts, crosswind. So I'll be I've like, got oh, shit. about, Come in um, sideways. so I'm student pilot on hold also, mm. um, but I get to fly these guys airplanes all the time. So I have pretty decent amount of hours for not actually hardly doing any ground school, but um, I've got, a little over six hours in a 172 straight tail. Say 56, oh, wow. I believe. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah. It was a great plan. It was so funny because everybody was like, wow, that's so old. Like, do you feel safe? And I was like, I felt safer in that than I did in a new plane because that oh, means yeah. it's had 56 certifications. It's had 56 right. mechanics that have gone through it, you know, rivet mm-hmm. by rivet, bolt by bolt to and make sure it's wolf, operational. Yeah. I have one question so, though, Mike. Was it made by yeah. Bowie? No. <laughs> okay. so right, you're doing out. good then, man. You have all your bolts oh. then. I'm just saying. Um, you know what? I can't help but like I could go down the conspiracy path. I can't. When all these things all suddenly started happening with all the Boeing aircraft, my thoughts were, who did they piss off? Yeah, 100%. Who did they piss off? Anyway, Draco, don't you even well, think about barking right now. Um, well, let me tell the, you what I think about that real quick before we head down that trail. So the, the reality is, is I can tell you somebody who worked in industrial automation. I worked for a company. I'm not going to mention who they are. I'm not going to mention, you know, the manufacturer, but they started outsourcing a lot of their work to other smaller companies, whether they were, uh, they were basically out of country. I'll just use that as an example. It was in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And what happened was we saw the first year a huge, and when I say huge, I mean a huge drop off in production. And and what I mean by that is production quality. Uh, Uh You would see like threaded bolts, like the the actual thread assembly that's coming out would be bent slightly off. It wasn't Mm -hmm. perfectly straight. They were off. The nuts didn't like really secure onto the actual threading. So, you know, I... It's very easy to see why quality control gets hurt if you don't if you're Suffers. not on top yeah. of it all mm-hmm. the time. 
Um, yeah. and, and I, and, you know, Boeing, I think that's what their biggest issue is right now is just making sure their quality can, their QC is like up to par uh, yeah. for aviation where I think Airbus has it down, but Airbus went through their stuff early on. If you remember yeah. back with their, yeah. um, their radar cones that would give <laughs> false readings of where they were in elevation, oh they gosh. would slam the nose into the ground. If you remember those and crash. So, I mean, everybody goes oh, through those, think, yeah. through those that's things. So funny. But, when I, when I, when I do fly commercial, when the wing Boeing more than I'm used to seeing, I'm like, today's right. the day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop. We're going to be on a plane in two weeks. <laughs> Don't be throwing today that shit up there. Don't be the throwing day. that up into the air, man. I'm like, I've seen them where they're bouncing. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was telling Mike, I was coming back from Atlanta once and there was a storm rolling through in Tampa. And the, so the pilot was like, you know, he had this, fuck it. I'm going to land this thing. You know what I mean? Because it was really <laughs> windy. I've never seen a plane come in sideways. Like oh, sideways from have, the cross. Cra- cra- they call it crabbing. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you hell you call it, man. All I know yeah. is that my asshole was puckering the whole entire, because <laughs> I could literally look out my window and you shouldn't see the runway, you know, you could be in so towards funny. the middle back. You know what I mean? And I'm going, holy shit, man, he's got this plane sideways. And all of a sudden he just turns that sucker on dime and slams it to the ground. Oh yeah. You know, and I yeah. was just like, I was like, oh, thank you, baby Jesus. Oh, thank you. We're down on the ground. Well, mm-hmm. now, <laughs> now if you, <laughs> if you go and watch some of the stole videos, um, especially right. the stole drag, they 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 do what they, it's called a forward slip, right? Because they have to they have to manage energy just so because they, you know it's a spot landing, so they don't want to scratch, right. but it's distant, so you want to land as close to the line as you can without before it, right? You can land on or past. Mm. You want to stop, but you have to have enough power to get there. So they haul ass across the course, and then they chop the power about halfway. And so to s- slow down, what they do is they, they use the fuselage as the airplane. So you get in these hard slips where the airplane is facing like it's, it's going to go way. off the runway, but it's moving, <laughs> traveling forward. Mm-hmm. And it uses the fuselage to create resistance to slow down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the cool. first time you sat that, did your asshole pucker? <laughs> I was just kidding. No. <laughs> or were you kind of no. like, ah, no big deal. Well, I've seen it so much because I'm in this industry, you know. So like right. most people, um, we we look for places to go down when we're flying. Like I can land there. I can land there. Oh, there's a yeah. there's a, a sandbar. Let's go you land do that there. A lot. So you know, because they've got the big old, they got big fat tires, big tundra <laughs> tires on these little yeah. planes, so you can just land anywhere you want. Yeah, that's 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 one of the things you're always kind of scanning your area to see oh, yeah. what's around you, it's not what's below if I had you. To go so, down. Or, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's where. When. Where, <laughs> when, when, and where? I hate you both right now. Man. My hands then, are, my palms are sweating, dude. I'm like, God, I I'll sweat you, when like, I get on a plane, dude. I sweat like horrible. I didn't, I didn't really realize how challenging it is to like land the plane oh, because yeah. you're coming in under under no power. You're just falling out. It's a controlled <laughs> fall. Mm-hmm. You're falling right, out man. of the sky, <laughs> and. <laughs> And you're sometimes you're pointing the nose of the plane in a direction that you don't even think you should be pointing it because the way the wind's pushing yeah. you. So you're coming in sideways mm-hmm. because you have to keep moving forward or you're going to miss the runway if you're flying directly at it. And then at the very last second, you turn and just drop like physics and aerodynamics, the, man, onto the runway. And it's kind of scary because you're like, oh crap. And then if you hit it too hard, you can bounce and it makes you take off again. Like yeah. the wind just catches you because the plane wants to fly. Like it just, it wants to fly. It doesn't, it does not want to be on the ground. So it was, it was definitely some, there was a couple of nerve wracking landings that I didn't get oh, a lot of them, but there was well, a couple. I was like, Oh, this is wild. Yeah. Cause with the, this dog. Um, <laughs> hey man, that's your roadie, man. What are you talking about? No, no, that, you hear that yappy dog? That's not mine. That's my oh. mother's. I'm at my mom's. Oh. So, um, the, uh, now I forgot what i was gonna say anyway <laughs> you have a damn lot. dog so here's that here so during at during sun and fun brad what we'll have to do is you'll have to come down to the stole demos and okay. we'll put you in one of these bush planes and we'll get you to experience a side slip up i mean all of the guys that are that are participating in the stole demonstration are some of the top competitors from the series so they're incredibly like they're Shit, the best. i want to go yeah yeah <laughs> i saw mike's face he's like Screw that asshole! Is, I, mean, I, I want to go. He won't get in that damn bullshit. thing. No, he's scared of heights. Like he won't go. Like, I'll get in a plane, I, I, which is weird. I was, 
Yeah, you won't after that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like right now, my asshole is completely clenched, dude. You can put it. You can put a lump of coal up my butthole right now. You'd have a diamond in about five minutes. That's how no, much yeah. I'm clenching right now because well, I'm like nervous. I was just thinking from educational purposes, but I'm sure I could get you both up. So okay. I know a girl. I need, I need to be educated. Teach me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wise one. laughs> oh Lord! I, I, I could play stupid. You know, <laughs> my planes. I hope. <laughs> so mike are you gonna do it are you gonna get up there and fly sideways and backward and all that other shit oh i would totally ride in that yeah totally <laughs> all right you go first <laughs> go, I don't I'll, care. Go I'll go second <laughs> yeah so it's when is yeah, my favorite, um april 9th through the 14th but the 14th really is it's sunday it's a breakdown day they still have an air show but it's it's a ghost town compared to the rest of the week so, so when would be the best day to go out there for us my opinion um, mm -hmm. it depends. Um, if you want to see the night show, I would say Wednesday. Um, so but the Wednesday, soul demos don't there. fly that day. You don't get to see the soul demos. So, because we don't fly the same day as the night show. So we fly Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and the night show Wait. is Wednesday and Saturday. Wait, so this is at night you have to do this? This flight? No. Well, well, oh, okay. She's the, talking, there's a nice show. She's talking about. She was talking in general. What's the best uh, day? Your son and fall and not. I meant like for us to come out there and do the demo thing and like get oh, one of these. What yeah, do you call bushwhacker was, planes? Is that what you called it? Bush planes. Bush planes. Bush yeah. planes. I said bushwhacker, but bush planes. <laughs> they have really big tires on them, and they're built to land in more rugged places. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Can we so, film ourselves and our reactions? Of well, a lot of the uh, guys have GoPros on and in their airplanes yeah. anyway. Oh, this ought to be fun. Ah. Mike's going to be perfectly calm, cocktail in hand. Just like, yeah, this is easy. I'm going to be like, <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> you know what? It's It'll so be awesome. I love it, though, because so I've got, I've got lots of friends, of course, local that fly. And why? it's like, hey, well, I'm going to scoop you up and we're going to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, okay. And you don't have to go through security. You don't have no. to check your bags. You can have your bag, your bottle of whiskey in the bag for when you yep. get ready to where you're going to go. You don't have to worry about checking anything. You just hop in the airplane, you go. You just leave. You just okay, leave. I'll do it. Fuck it. If Michael, if Michael go, I'll go. <laughs> I, want, I, I want to finish my pilot's license and I want to get another plane. That's definitely on my list of things to do. Um, I want to build my own. Oh, yeah. What, what do you want to build? What kind of experimental? Man, I don't know. There's just so many good ones out there and um, mm. I, I i i don't want to say i don't want to say if i say the one that i want to build i'm going to get ridiculed really badly okay but um, you'll have to tell me tell me off the air i'll tell you yeah. off air but yeah that's, um, that's my typical my, day my buddy has an rv10 and he oh, loves those are great. it those are great. he loves it like the he's RVs trying to get me to go up in it yeah are especially the 10 um, yeah. A lot of my friends find that I uh, the art they've got the fours and the sixes are very popular. Four six, yeah. It's a, yeah. Well, they're the, they're an amazing airplane, right? Yeah. They're they're aerobatic capable. They you get good fuel mileage on them, mm -hmm. and, and they're, they're fast. Quick. They're, yeah, so they're quick. I mean, yep. it is it, as all around, and and their their payload capacity is pretty impressive, considering mm -hmm. the size of them. Yeah. You know, so that I mean, I feel like that is an awesome airplane. I mean, I'm a big fan of the Skywagons, the big 180s, because you can throw oh, okay. all your gear in. They're just big enough that you can go cross country because they've got a good enough, you know, fuel um, tank, airspeed. Yeah. Well, yeah. airspeed. Oh, too. So airspeed. Yeah. Okay. You know, you you believe me, you do not want to be coming across the U.S. in a cup. <laughs> It'll take you like if you if you if I get in my truck and my friend leaves in a cub, mm -hmm. I will win. Yeah, that that was the one thing that um, bothered me about my um, Cessna was it just slow. Well, one seventy two is not that slow. Oh, I don't have how much slower is the well, other one slow. that you were just talking about. I mean the the like, little ones, the little Cubs, my, they're they're so light. Like if you get a headwind, your your gas mileage is down, and you're lucky um, if you're going sixty across the ground. Oh wow, okay, yeah, because mine was at a hundred. Like that's kind of where it was cruising speed of hundred miles an hour, which wasn't yeah. terrible. I mean, in Florida, but for anything further away, it was kind of like, Ugh. yeah. Because our buddy <laughs> Jeff Pohl, he's coming down for the demonstration in a Cessna one hundred and seventy B, a fifty five one hundred and seventy B from Minnesota. So okay, yeah, and we're, yeah, we got people coming from all over. Dan Reynolds coming from Alaska. We got people coming, or Dan Reynolds coming from the Yukon, Canada. Keith Lang coming from Alaska. We got mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool. We got a cool lineup. Yeah, that's really cool. So that's right. again, again, and we'll probably wrap up the show after you answer this question. But 
what would be probably the best day for us both to get down there and, you know, do this <sighs> flying stuff? <laughs> probably. Well, I'd want you to see the demo. We'll have to get you out more than one day if we can. I'd want you to see our demo, but for flying purposes, the best day would be Wednesday because my okay. guy's schedule is clear on Wednesday. I don't have anything scheduled for them, so okay. there'll be a free fly, okay. op- free fly opportunities there. We'll, we'll put it in our notes. Some dog. Jesus Christ. That's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Hey, listen, we have it's animals. Okay. We get it. We have animals. We get it. Um, and, you know, just adds to adds to the show. Well, Anitra, we're going to bring you back on for another episode. And if that's okay with you, if you'd like oh, to be on. I love that. But we we'll talk about the fitness journey and some of the other stuff you have done in your mm-hmm. fitness journey. I would love to have okay. a conversation about that for a little bit. So, mm-hmm. guys, again, thank you so much, Anitra, for coming on the show today. We really appreciate you. Um, great, great conversation. Time. Yeah. And uh, Mikey, before we get out of here, do you have anything? Hey, everybody, have a great day. Appreciate you listening to Daily BM. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a review. If it's good, if it's bad, pick another podcast. Leave a bad review for them. Um, <laughs> if you don't like it, you shouldn't be listening anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, with that, guys, uh, we'll see you on the next episode and we will catch you on the flip side. Deuces.